Hey, everybody, it's Brett. It has been a little while since we checked in, but uh, I'm heading to the Bitcoin conference later today. I wanted to give you guys a quick update in what I'm seeing in the markets. And uh, so if you guys, if any of you are going, you're going to be in Miami for Bitcoin 2023, uh, put your put something in the comments down below. I'm going to be running into Max and uh, maybe one of the other speakers from the channel. So I uh, look forward to seeing you there. It should be a great conference. I believe there are some tickets left, but um, uh, you'll have to look on the uh, website, which is b.tc. And I um, want to dive into some news here and show you what I'm seeing in the charts and uh, give you an idea of what to expect here in the markets as we head forward. And so uh, just to dive into anything or dive into everything rather, uh, this is some news that I was looking at this morning. And um, I want to give you my overall macro view in, in a minute, but I do like to skim the news, kind of see where things are at and uh, what people are saying, just get an overall view of things. I trust what I see in the charts, but I like to uh, just have an overall frame around things. So uh, here's some interesting news here about Tether. Tether pledging to plow 15% of its profits into Bitcoin. Uh, so that's profits, though. That doesn't mean their entire money that they have on the side. But uh, let's see, uh, they're, but they're pledging to add $1.5 billion of the cryptocurrency so that's bullish and so um we'll have to keep an eye on that and uh, keep an eye on the price see if that follows the markets are down today so let's see if we can unravel why let's see here we have something uh, saying that that one of the greatest bitcoin metrics of bitcoin's price bull run is showing i've been saying that for two months now when our monthly indicators so uh, we're showing that three months ago actually so we'll show pull that up uh this indicator here i'm not that familiar with this looks like it's on glass node and it's called the rhodl ratio and without diving into what that is it uh, has something to do with hodling, obviously. And so this green zone down below, maybe we can open that up here, is what they're saying is we're in that zone. We're coming out of that zone. And that's kind of similar to what uh, I've been showing on our monthly chart as well. So just moving along, because I want to get to the good stuff. Uh, some news here. This was from yesterday. You know, as you probably have heard, the SEC and Coinbase have uh, locked horns in some legal, legal wranglings here. And uh, what's interesting, too, is I was watching... Uh, some uh, of the I've got some software that shows uh, insider selling and the, the executives, including Brian Anderson, were selling lots of their Coinbase, uh, really selling a lot of shares starting back in December, all the way up into March ahead of the Wells notice that the SEC fired over the bow or that landed at Coinbase. So maybe somebody knew something uh, remains to be seen. But uh, the Coinbase uh, is now suing the SEC to get some regulatory clarity on things. And so here we see the SEC firing back, and it could bring some enforcement action against crypto exchange. Generally, a Wells notice comes before some in enforcement action. So uh, no big news here. But it is sad to see that the U.S. is doing as much as they can, apparently, to push crypto offshore and out of the United States. Uh, here we have Celsius Network unfreezing some of its Ether staking you know, to kind of break the ice, as we know that many people are holding uh, ETH. And with the new upgrades, they are now allowed to unfreeze their staking. And uh, so we haven't seen a whole lot of dumping here yet, although these markets today might indicate this could be a, a catalyst for starting people starting to pull back out of the markets. But uh, from the charts, we can see things are weak. Really, the overarching per, uh, now overarching um, frame around this is that uh, the uh, you know the government's going to they're talking about possibly defaulting on the national debt. So June first, allegedly, that's coming up. Uh, now we've seen this happen before. Lots of song and dance and panic and. Uh, in political wrangling, we're not going to raise the debt ceiling, and, and uh, the opposing party always says that, and then in the final hours they do, but uh, we are at $31 trillion in national debt. The last time I think this happened was at $17 trillion. So um, it remains to be seen. I think it's it may be, just to put this aside for a second, uh, the uh, I think we would need to be careful that we don't have a wolf, uh, the boy crawled, cried wolf scenario where we've everyone has their guard down that will raise the debt ceiling and then they don't. Um, that could cause markets to crash and really come down. So we really want to be careful of that. Uh, on the other side, if the Fed comes in, if the 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 Congress and the uh, political parties agree to raise the debt ceiling, then what does that mean? That means more money printing. That could really push markets higher. So we have to be ready 
for anything here. And then, of course, if uh, if ETH whales continue to dump Ethereum, that could suppress price. I was uh, hopeful that ETH would lead this rally. It's uh, not clear if that would, could be Bitcoin or Ethereum. Uh, here's a quick news article, too, saying that uh, the Michael Burry, the famous for the big short, essentially is loading up on regional banks, which is interesting because of all the bank failures. Many were speculating that that would tank the markets. I have a scenario I'm going to show you here in a minute. Well, three, three, a perfect storm of three things that trifected that could push Bitcoin much, much higher, possibly 100,000 in the short term. So with that, why don't we kind of dive into this and um, uh, and get right to it. So let me just pull up a chart of the DXY here. Been watching this for months. Uh, the DXY moves in an inverse relationship to Bitcoin. It lost a little bit of the correlation here in the sideways chop, but it's still valid. And so as we're pushing up higher on the DXY, we are seeing a pullback in the markets, which I've been expecting. And uh, we'll look at some levels where I've been expecting it to pull back to, at which point it would be, it would be an excellent likely point to bounce and uh, bounce higher. And I'll show you, I'll tell you where that is. From here, DXY, I think it's reasonable to push up into this 103 level, which we would see coincide with a drop in Bitcoin, Ethereum, then of course the rest of the alts and altcoins. And uh, at which point though, potentially this is necessarily drawn out to scale, but toward the end of May turning over, and I have been suggesting this, that May would be a down month. And we've had four months of green candles in Bitcoin. So really needed to see a pullback. So I think we continue lower in May. And then going into June, July, we see this, the DXY drop off and uh, the markets really start to rally. So that's uh, my thesis here. And uh, if you'd like to follow that, uh, I've got it. Uh, I've got it up on TradingView somewhere. Now, actually, that's going to be that, that scenario for 100K. So let's get to that here. Uh, just some news on Bitcoin. We already covered this Tether plan to boost its 1.5. Bitcoin uh, holdings. And let's see, uh, we've already talked about those two other news articles. So this is a monthly chart of Bitcoin. And uh, so again, that four months of upward candles here. So this big bullish engulfing candle, then a little bit of a pause here, another big push up, hit up around this $32,000 range, which I was suggesting that we would. Basically, that was strong support and uh, back in this area here, strong support flipped as resistance back in June of 2022 and took about eight months to get back to it. But last month, we pushed up high to that 32K level in uh, April and pulled back. So what I'm drawing here, just to make this a little bit larger, is that, uh, you know, and we, I think we come back in this range. We almost got there, that 25,500, really the 25,300 level, so significant because now we'll look at it on a weekly basis, but uh, so we we almost came back down to it. We could we could bounce from here, but I I tend to think we we head lower, have another drop down, and uh, bounce off that twenty five five level, maybe twenty five three, and then we push higher. As I've been saying, um, the reason I think this we could push up to forty eight k fifty k fairly quickly. That would be a golden pocket Fibonacci retracement, which is that 0 0.618, 0 0.65, drawing from the cycle top here in uh, the end of 2021 to the bottom here in November of 2022 and extending that out. Puts us right about 48K to 50K. Uh, 50K is a nice big round number. So I would expect if we get to this, uh, this area, a uh, sort of a exhaustion move up to 50k where it would then roll over so i don't have that drawn as a resistance area yet uh, we'd have to get closer to it and then look at it certainly possible we do lose this 25.5 level at which point i think we could come back down here and uh, retrace uh, and the fibonacci golden pocket to the downside around this 21,900 22,000 so these are the two most likely scenarios i see on the monthly time frame on the uh, the you know things are really get bad. The worst case scenarios are deeper pulls down, you know, below nineteen thousand eight hundred. We could see that we've seen thirty percent retracements here once a new bull market has started in the past. Uh, and so if we zoom out, I won't actually spend the time to show that uh, on the uh, pullback, but uh, we have seen that in prior cycles. And uh, so here's one example: the bull market resumed and then pulled back down here. In this case. You know, it was significant. It was over, you know, 50%. Of course, we had the COVID crash. Um, it, we're in a different market 
uh, environment. So I think that's a bit of a stretch to look for how far, but coming back into these levels, you know, possibly retesting the 16,500 level. Um, by the way, uh, just as a reminder, I had I had uh, publicly predicted 16.5 back in May of 2022. It's on my Facebook. It's uh, publicly predicted that that we'd push up to 32K and then down to 16.5 eventually. A um, little bit of luck there, but we did spend a few months here at that 16.5 level, very strong support. I do imagine that would hold uh, the hash ribbon indicator has been firing. Generally, that means uh, it's a minor um, accumulation indicator. Generally, that means we don't we do not go back below the recent cycle low. Now it has failed in the past in this recent recent cycle back in here. So it's not as as reliable as it once was. But still, I have these scenarios drawn. And then, uh, of course, if we do break the sixteen five hundred level, I think we still could see the fourteen thousand dollar price level that I was talking about last year. So with uh, that out of the way, I just want to pull up our custom indicators uh, here as well. And let's see what happened here on the chart. It's uh, zoomed out. Okay. Um, this These are our custom indicators. So in terms of the, when we called the bottom of the market, this green arrow here, that is our early reversal indicator. Uh, giant bullish engulfing candle. So no surprise there. That was a huge signal. We would head higher, but uh, we did catch it here. ERI and our trend strength indicator. The only times those have fired in the past on the monthly time frame were after the market cycle bottom back here in 2015 uh, even back to 2012 here we had our bullish or sorry the uh, our early reversal indicator here 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 in uh, 2019 along with our trend strength indicator going green and breaking above that all important 20 line. So we are seeing that. We've seen that a couple months ago. I wasn't sure if we'd see a minor pullback, but we just shot up higher. The third indicator is our signal indicator, which is our third line, which is going green. Uh, and by the way, if you'd like to, uh, more information on these indicators and want to use them in your training, you can go to uh, moonstream.io slash success. And that's with permission uh, from Max there. So that's moonstream.io slash success. You can learn more about that uh, if you'd like these indicators that's really what we use utilize uh one of my business partners is a quant engineer and a trader and a programmer and professional uh, algorithm builder etc so uh you can check that out moonstream.io slash success and uh, look forward to seeing max this week by the way maybe maybe we'll do a, a live video uh, and upload it to you guys. That would be fun. Here's the Bitcoin on a weekly basis. So um, a couple of things here. We have a potential head and shoulders pattern forming. So very important that we hold in this level. This purple line, of course, is a 200-week moving average, all important support level that's held at key support levels in the past, going back to 2018 and, of course, the COVID crash. So we did break below that here in the last cycle. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm going fast because I got a flight to catch. Uh, and let me kill the camera, too. You don't need to see me, but I'll just give you a quick wave. And uh, next time you see us might be from uh, the Bitcoin conference down in Miami. So <clears throat> here we go. Uh, so in terms of this, we want to see this hold here, the 200 moving average. If it can hold and, and hold this 25.5 level, then I would, again, be looking for that bounce and push higher and retest at 32,000 range. If we can't hold there and we break down here, um, and we have the head and shoulders form. We want to we want to watch for a weekly hold above the 200 week moving average, as I say here, that purple line. If it breaks down on this range and then bounces around and we lose that that level around 22,000, uh, that would be a head and shoulders breakdown, and that would could send us down the measured move here to around around 15,200, maybe retest the lows. Uh, back in November. So these are some levels that we're watching and paying attention to. A, a bit overbought, I am bearish in the short term, our trend strength indicator breaking down below the 80 line. So I'm looking for further downside, really want to see the strongest moves come after a green break uh, on the upside on this TSI indicator. So I am expecting us to come down a bit before we go higher. Uh, RSI is still kind of an uptrend here, but um, yeah, you know, again, we have the sort of a head and shoulders type of pattern potentially forming. You know, we are still heading down lower in the stochastics RSI, which I was suggesting back here because every time we double tap that high level this does pull back and does fully cycles down low so we do have i believe more downside in bitcoin on the weekly time frame uh, here's that uh trading view you can find this uh, on trading view uh, if you search for uh, my name brett fogel and um uh, but this is my scenario where we could see bitcoin hundred thousand possibly in the near term within this year and uh, you can we'll find that and hit click play and it'll show you so far i've been right it's gone down now this is a fractal overlay let me just jump over to the actual chart this is a fractal overlay of 
what happened back in this uh, prior cycle. I'm not sure what I clicked there, but I, here, let's try this again. And uh, so this uh, this highlighted area, this the uh, bars pattern here is this exact move here, stretched to fit a little bit. So the things that could move Bitcoin to past 50,000 and up to 100K, and uh, and then from there we'll have to see. But the three things, the perfect storm would be the hyperinflation and de-dollarization of the dollar. Now we're hearing the BRICS nations uh, creating their own currencies. Uh, they're not using the dollar to settle their uh, oil and gas uh, purchases. That's happening. That is, of course, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and S is um is it south korea it's one of these but there's more countries that are that are joining the BRICS nations uh, i'm drawing a blank on that but it doesn't matter what, what that would mean though is less dollars less demand for dollars more dollars coming back to the u.s causing some hyperinflation the second factor would be the qe money printing to pay down the u.s debt which i talked about if they do they were some talk of printing in the trillion dollar coin and uh, by the um, fed and uh, and the uh, and then holding that or using that to sort of pay down some of our debt, uh, that could also lead towards some of that hyperinflation. But of course, it also could lead to rampant rise in price because as we have QE, as we saw in the post-COVID environment that really helped rally the markets. So I was watching a very interesting video by Bob Lucas this morning. Uh, he's a smart guy in March who was talking about uh, the potential, he has been talking about this for a while, the potential for the, the Bitcoin parabola, the Bitcoin big move happening before the parabola, whereas usually the, the halving, it, it trades up into the halving and uh, and then and then it sort of really takes off and so but he's saying that could happen sooner. It's too early to tell. But that third factor would be more bank failures and bank runs and people pulling their money out of their banks and into gold and Bitcoin. Of course, those these three things could create the perfect storm for a rapid rise higher here on Bitcoin on its weekly basis. And that could happen as early as August, according to this uh, chart. Not likely, but it's possible. So, you know, uh, hey, if, if that happens, you guys owe me steak, steak dinner. How about that? Um, anyway, let's see. Let me just uh, kind of move along here and we'll look at some other things. Uh, this is the Bitcoin chart on the daily. I'm also seeing our indicators bearish on this daily chart. So we've got a bearish re early reversal indicator and our trend strength indicator. Now our radar is all green. So that's interesting. These markets are acting a little bit strange right now. Uh, but the biggest thing that's bearish right now is also that Bitcoin is below the 50-day moving average and has been heading lower. So we've seen that reject here on the way down. Actually, I'm sorry, this is a 3x short. I thought that looked a little bit strange. Uh, and um, so forgive me there, that is a, a possible trade. If you thought that uh, Bitcoin will held lower, this is a possible trade that you could monitor, not financial advice, but uh, in this case, getting some mixed signals, it would have to break above this 50-day moving average. If it can, that would be indicative of Bitcoin going lower and this thing kind of running higher. And these things, uh, these are available on KuCoin. Again, not financial advice, just a, a possibility, educational purposes only. And uh, some people like to trade the downside that way. On the daily basis here, uh, this is again where I think we'll pull back and again into this sort of 25,300 range. Why is that so significant? Uh, hide some of this, uh, the chart, so you can see that better. But um, going back in this range here, you know, we had 25.3. Uh, if we go even farther back, well, let's see, mostly it was strong resistance back here in August of 2022, came up again, rejected here in uh, February 23, finally broke back above it. We haven't retested this. So we really need to come down and retest that 25,300 level and uh, and hold and push higher and that would be bullish for bitcoin so uh, you know the other view of this is we are in a new uptrending trending uh, trade channel there so you know this uh we would want to see this kind of come down and retest that and then head higher so you know um but again there's that head and shoulders pattern potentially forming so it's a good time to sit in the sidelines and watch when in doubt stay out I would say, uh, here's another look at it on the head and shoulders that could be playing out. So in terms of overall markets, uh, in the markets are sort of stagnant right now. The only thing I wanted to show you was total market cap. So let's pull this up and look at that on a larger time frame. And let's see, we get rid of this here. So essentially, total market cap has been in this upward trending time frame or trend channel as well. 
And uh, so it really needs to hold right here. Total market cap getting a bullish early reversal indicator and uh, my trend strength indicator here turning green. So this is bullish. And so it just needs a little bit more time, you know, maybe another week or two going in next week or the week after we could see some, see some movement. But if it cannot hold this, then uh, we have a bit of a an issue here and this thing may be rolling over and so i know it's a bit much to look at on this chart let me pull of this some of this off on there what do we have drawn here now i've got a fibonacci here basically uh from this bounce point so if this was the high possible pullback could come back into this golden pocket right under a trillion dollars but uh we want to don't want to see it get back in this downward trend channel which it's been in since since the market cycle top back there in november of course so with that in mind um looking for a bounce here on on this uh, one of the things that is is a little concerning though i'll just jump back to eth as i've been watching eth dominance bitcoin um bitcoin dominance of course uh, wrong chart there so bitcoin dominance still in an uptrend hit some resistance here at these levels up around 49 percent which has been a resistance area in the past if it can break above it however on bitcoin now uh, and come back and retest then it looks like bitcoin will lead the market rally when it comes the uh, problem with eth and the reason i thought this might be it i'll just zoom out a bit on the five-day time frame uh, this uh, ETH dominance here, all the 2018 and 2020 was was reduced, was going down in a downward trend, and then it flipped back in November 2019, held the upper range of this trend channel. It's been going sideways ever since, and uh, I hate to keep widening this because it seems that it is even here. It seems like it's it's just it's breaking to the downside. ETH dominance just flatlining here, really for almost a year at this point. So I'll uh, keep an eye on that. But uh, other than that, not much to see in these markets here, not much moving. You guys just mostly red. I do think we pull back and to continue to go lower on Bitcoin. I'll just pull up that weekly chart again, uh, which one was that? And so, you know, there you have it. I think uh, we have some downside. I have some bullish on the trend strength indicator, but uh, I have been noticing some drawing these lines will be, it could, could roll back over again. And um, so, you know, uh, that's what we're waiting for. I think, you know, do we bounce here off this 25.5 level? Uh, you know, but this is a bullish engulfing candle on this weekly basis. So again, just to clean that up a bit, bullish engulfing candle on the weekly would also indicate some more downside. And uh, one of my other things that I learned a long time ago as a trader, large candles tend to retest the midpoint. Uh, some people call them vector candles, but um, I don't know this qualifies. This is a very bullish uh, candle here, uh, candlestick here. So I don't know. Do we come back down and retest this 25,300 level, uh, which I already have on this chart? I think it's it's likely. But um, so again, it's a good time to be out. But I think in the, in the near term, once this thing bottoms out and settles out a bit, uh, we could see one more shakeout capitulation. Uh, we could see a push higher here. And that's what I'd like to see. I see that strong rally up to 48K, 50K. And to me, that would be an opportune time to catch a nice swing trade up into this range. Where afterwards, though, I would I would expect to see profit taking, some retracement, and then decide, is it going to break to the higher side of things? But uh, it does feel to me that the market the bottom is in. This is some normal selling pressure. You know, the news is going to be noise news is noise i just made that up but um uh, if you think about it, it largely that's true i'm my uh, other students know me as saying show me the charts i'll tell you the news usually that's the case the news is basically uh confirming or the catalyst of what the charts are already telling us so anyway watch the dxy guys again dxy pushing up bitcoin down possibly for the next couple of weeks into the end of may and uh, then I would expect to see things turn around. But new information equals new decision. Of course, the big news, again, is the Fed and what we're going to do with the debt ceiling. So that's going to determine largely what happens from here. So uh, anyway, guys, thanks. So, uh, And again, if you are going to be down in Miami for the Bitcoin conference, should be a great time. And uh, if you like the uh, content here today, be sure to hit like and subscribe and uh, leave a like or comment below. And um, and, uh, you know, if you'd like to see something from Max and I doing a video live, that could be fun. Okay, everybody, take care. And uh, we'll try to do more updates here as things progress. Thanks so much.